this is the smallest desktop PC that I've ever seen. It's called the Exio Pantera Pico PC. Let's take a bit of a closer look at this little thing. There's one huge caveat to start off the video, and I feel like I should mention this from the beginning. Thanks, Binny. I figured I'd just let you guys know at the start of the video what the story was with availability and all that stuff in case you were interested. We're not endorsing the Pantera Pico PC because this is an Indiegogo campaign that hasn't even started. What do you reckon, Bindi? Are you gonna endorse this little thing? I don't, see, look, she's not having it. Spec-wise, we're looking at the Intel Celeron Gemini Lake J4125. It's a four-core, four-threaded CPU. It's got Intel UHD 600 graphics, and the CPU boosts up to around 2.7 gigahertz. This will take up to eight gigs of LPDDR4. Our configuration has that eight gigs. And storage-wise, you're looking at about 512 gigs of eMMC maxed out. We've only got 256 gigs in this configuration here there's only wireless networking so you don't get any ethernet which we're going to look at in a sec anyway in terms of the operating system it's got windows 10 home pre-installed this will work with windows 11 because it does have tpm 2.0 and secure boot but will also run many linux distros as well and for the starting price we're looking at around 169 us dollars when this campaign starts so on the front, we've got a front vent, there's a reset hole, there's two USB 3.0 ports, a micro SD card slot to expand the storage, as well as a power button. And if we whip around to the back side, there's a single USB-C port, but that's to only power it with the 12 volt adapter. There's also another USB 3.0 port, a USB 2.0 port, a headset jack, which will work with a microphone and the headphone output as well, and an HDMI 2.0 port and that rear vent to exhaust all of the hot air out. The Pantera is a small PC, but how small is it? Here's an M1 Mac mini, right? Here is the Minis Forum DMAF5 that we already checked out previously, and here is the XTO Pico PC. You can already see that this thing is completely tiny. And if we do this little bit of a side by side, you can see that, you know, it is considerably smaller. And in terms of the height as well, it's about the same height as the DMAF5 that we've already covered. It is quite a bit taller than the Mac Mini, but the Mac Mini is just overall a much bigger computer. But how small is this thing really, right? Here's the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And right here, we have the XDO Pantera Pico PC. All right, we get it. It's small, but what can it do? Quite a bit, actually. I guess let's do the opposite of what normal videos do, and we'll start off with the bad. So for games like CSGO at 720p low, uh, this is actually captured with our capture PC. Uh, it's not ideal like you can see that we get some considerable frame dips to as low as about 10 frames per second on average it's pretty cinematic at around 24 to 30 frames per second you can see the frame counter in the top left hand side so you know this is not a great experience it's kind of playable but you know, CSGO traditionally runs on a potato, however the Pantera is smaller than your average potato. But can it run Crisis? I don't think Crisis is a good metric for anything, and the answer is probably not very well. Anyway, CSGO performance, like for more modern titles like CSGO, that's basically gonna be the story with the XDO Pantera. There's no doubt about that. Obviously like CSGO isn't one of the most modern titles, but it is a good starting point to show you what the performance is like. So obviously that performance is not great, but what about with emulation? Well, this tells a bit of a different story. All right, here's a bit of a classic Daytona USA on a Dreamcast emulator. We're using Redream here. Redream doesn't do any type of fancy resolution scaling or anything like that. It is what it is. And this is in windowed mode and we're getting a full 60 FPS lock with a couple frame dips here and there. Uh, sometimes it's going below 60, sometimes it's hitting 61 frames, but overall 60 frames. And in full screen mode, we're seeing the exact same thing here. There's no resolution scaling going on here with this emulator at all with Daytona USA. 
You also notice that my driving skills in this are pretty terrible. Uh, my excuse is the sensitivity is all out of whack on this controller. Anyways, 2D games on the Dreamcast like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. You can see that at full screen we're getting a 60 FPS lock as well. Now this emulator actually runs a whole lot better than I thought it was going to do on this hardware. And I wanted to try out an emulator with some resolution scaling, but the thing is, I just ran out of time for making this video. So this was the quickest way to do this. I did test some other titles that weren't in this video and everything appeared to work exactly the same. All right, next up, we've got some Mario Kart Double Dash with a GameCube emulator. We're using Dolphin here. And as you can see at regular resolution, so even in windowed mode with no scaling or anything like that, no anti-aliasing, we're getting a 60 FPS lock. We're also getting this in full screen mode as well. One thing I've noticed with testing Ryzen APUs is most of the time with GameCube, we can actually scale it up to double resolution and still have a 60 FPS lock. So the XDO Pantera with its integrated GPU is just not as powerful as those Ryzen APUs. I did test it with using different resolution scaling and it is unplayable. That accounts for all other titles that I tested as well. What about Linux support on the XDO Pantera? Well, I've got some good news to share with you guys. As far as me testing this, Ubuntu 21.04 boots with no problems from a USB stick. You can either use it as a live stick or you can install it to the internal storage or you can install it to a micro SD card in the front slot as well. In terms of the Wi-Fi functionality, I had no problems using Wi-Fi with the Pantera at all. And that's usually the sticking point with Linux distros on these mini PCs. So emulation performance is fairly decent for what it is. It runs Linux. But one question we often get with things like APUs and integrated GPUs and that kind of stuff is, how is media playback, but more specifically, how is YouTube video playback at higher resolutions? Let's take a look. One thing people will use a system like this for is consuming content on YouTube. And here is a 4K60 test project, or rather a test video that a lot of people use to test playback. And we've got the stats for nerds turned on. And what you can see at 4K60 is we're dropping a whole lot of frames and it is a little bit stuttery with the playback. Now, if we go ahead and drop that down to 1440p, we'll just wait for it to load. You can also see that it is again, dropping a considerable amount of frames. So the UHD 600 isn't performing as you would probably expect a fairly modern PC to perform with YouTube. For the sake of science and curiosity, let's drop that down to 1080p. And again, when we get the video to start playing, it is dropping frames like crazy. And let's, let's go one step further, right? Let's go 720p and see what happens at 60 frames. And again, we're seeing a uh, whole stack of frames being dropped at 720p. So. 60 frames per second content, not ideal. What about 24 frames? So cinema frame rate. So here's a Gear Seekers video. We shoot everything at 24 FPS. This is at 720p. Once the user interface stuff goes away, it's not actually dropping any frames whatsoever. If we then switch the resolution to 1080p and once the UI elements go away from YouTube on screen, it, look, it's gonna drop frames, right? And now, it's not dropping any frames whatsoever. And lastly, if we bump that up to 4K, you're going to see again that at 4K, 24 frames per second, it'll drop those initial frames of when the UI is disappearing off screen in full screen, but it will now play 4K, 24 frames without dropping any frames. In the standard YouTube windowed mode, regardless of if you are playing it in full screen or not, it will most likely drop frames at all resolutions that I tested. All right, let's take a bit of a look at those thermals with our regular stress test in IDA 64. At idle, we're seeing around 45 degrees Celsius on the CPU core itself. 
and around 40 degrees for the graphics core. At full load, we're seeing about 65 degrees on the CPU and 56 degrees on the iGPU itself all while only consuming around 8 watts of power at full load. So energy efficiency is high for this little PC. All right, let's have a little bit of a listen and I'll show you how loud this is under full load and at idle as well. The Exio Pantera is not the most powerful computer in the world, but that's not really what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be one of the smallest computers in the world. And to be honest, that's kind of exactly what this is, but you are making quite a few sacrifices with a system like this. Obviously, you're within the limitations of size, so CPU is going to be playing a huge factor. Obviously, discrete GPUs just not going to be a thing. I would love to see this done with one of the Ryzen APUs, although this might not have the physical cooling capacity for something like that. But as a cool little toy to play around with and, you know, just tinker with as a tiny tinker type of PC, this is pretty cool. One thing that I would have liked to have seen on this is some type of GPIO on it. That way you could quite literally use it more for tinkering. Tearing it down would have been nice too, but it appears that it's a little bit complicated than it appears. And I don't want to break anything because to be honest, this is a very cool miniaturized bit of technology. It's physically like if you're looking at it top down, it's smaller than a Raspberry Pi. Obviously some Raspberry Pi cases are bigger than this. Speaking of Raspberry Pis, one thing I really wanted to do was a like a benchmark comparing this between a Raspberry Pi 4. I don't have one and getting them right now for where we are is quite hard and quite expensive. So that's something that we might pick up another time. Probably not, but this is a cool bit of miniaturized tech. Let us know what you think of the Exio Pantera Pico PC. I'll put a link to the campaign in the description as I mentioned all those weeks ago. I think the campaign starts when this video goes live, but I, again, I'm not promoting this. I'm not saying absolutely go out and buy this because realistically with these crowdfunding things, as we've seen in the past, or a June case, uh, <laughs> we don't know when it's actually going to be available to purchase. So them saying, I think they say November, don't quote me on that. The, the reality is it might come a lot later than that, given there's a lot of factors like raw material shortage and silicon shortage and all of that other stuff. Who knows when this will actually be available, you know? It might be completely obsolete by the time it actually comes out, but you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, you know what to do. Tell us what you liked about it. Tell us what you hated about it. Let us know what you think of these tiny little PCs. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And yeah, like again, with Indiegogo stuff, it's always pretty hard to say uh, when they announce this stuff, if it's actually gonna launch on time or whatnot, because you're not actually buying a product when you're crowdfunding, you're supporting a project and yeah. Thanks for watching.